I had a comment on my video about the pendulum wave on how I did it. So in this video, I'm going to show how I did it step by step. First, we're going to make the actual pendulum, which I'm going to do by using a cylinder and scale it up. And then I'm going to make something to be at the end of the cylinder. I'm just going to use like whatever you want. And I'm going to parent it. And then I'm going to choose the cylinder and then move the pivot to the top, which I do by pressing D and then pressing V to vertex snap and then move it to the top. So now when I rotate on the top, it only it rotates from the top and not from the center. Uh, I'm going to set my timeline to be on zero. And you'll see why in a in a minute. Um, so now that we have the first part of the pendulum, I need to do the wave, and this is done by expression. So I'm going to go into a channel box, and we have the rotate x, which is the, doing the rotation uh, for the for the rod. And I'm going to go press edit and then expression. This will show up the expression editor and it already has the cylinder and the X rotate X attribute selected in here. So if I copy and paste this into the expression editor and press, uh, let's say just uh, 45, for example, and press create, it moves the pendulum and sets the rotation to 45. So now what I want to do is have this um, rotate automatically with time and I want to have it swing back and forth. And to do that, I can use the sine wave or sine function. Uh, so if I put in sine and let's say I put in one and press edit, now it's set to the fun uh, sine function one's value, which is here. But if I play this, it doesn't change over time. So what I want to do is have this change over time. And to do that, I'm going to go back into the expression editor, which I have here and select the attribute, which is the rotate X. And then you can see your expression. And I'm going to put in time as what the sine function is going to do. So every frame, this is going to go one, two, three, and so far, and then use the sine function. And so if I press one, uh, press edit, and then play again, you can see that it starts to move slowly. So to have this like increase in amplitude, I'm going to go into the expression editor again, and I'm going to go times let's say 40 and press edit. Now when I play, you can see the amplitude is, is higher, um, but it's still working quite slow. So I'm just going to set this to a thousand to have some more time to work with. I'm going to select the cylinder, go back to the rotate X and now to get the pendulum swing faster, I'm going to time, I could take time and multiply it by five and press edit. Now, if I go back and then play again, you can see that it starts swinging faster. So now I want to have more pendulums to do. So I'm going to take the cyl uh, cylinder and then I'm going to clone it and then press Shift D to replicate that duplication. I'm going to do it just six times so I have something more interesting. So now I need to have, if I put the pendulum swing on the same length, um, in real life, it would be swinging at the same speed. So to have this be a little bit more realistic, I'm going to change the length of the cylinders. So like one thing I can do is I can just go in and either just scale it, which will compress the, the, 
the ball at the end or I can just go into vertex mode and then lift it up slightly uh, which I'm going to do just in this example maybe a little bit too much so moving all of it There. So now I have the pendulums at different lengths. So if I look at this from the side, you can see that they're all in different lengths. So this one would be swinging faster than the back one. So the way to do this, you can either put an expression on either cylinder. So what you would do is you would copy this over and then select the second cylinder, press rotate X, copy this in, and then to have it swing a little bit faster, I'm just gonna go 0.1 on the time multiplication and press create. Um, uh, and this one, of course, it says cylinder one, so I have to change this to cylinder two and press create. So now you can see cylinder two attributes rotate x and this the same thing here so if i play the video again you can see that both of them are swinging but now the first or um, the second cylinder is swinging a little bit faster um, and you can then go and do this on either cylinder and add it in uh, another way to do it is if i go into rotate x I'm going to delete this one and then remove the expression. So now we only have the back one rotating. If I go into the expression editor and ball cylinder one, go in and then copy this and then paste it in, put in point one and then select cylinder two and this step is important because if you don't do this, it will look as one ex uh, one expression. If you put a semicolon at, at the end of it, each expression and press edit. Now when you play, both of them move, but you only have the expression um, kind of living into the first cylinder. So if we, play, if we stop this, and then go back. You can see this is still um, using the same expression one as there is in the in the first cylinder. See, this is still expression one. So you can edit this one, and it's the same one controlling all of it. So what I can do is if I copy this for cylinder three, four, five, and six and then change these to be three, four, five, and six, and then add a different time value to three, four, and five, and then press edit. Now, if I play, you can see that they start swinging at different speeds. And all I have to do, if I want to edit it, is select one of them, doesn't really matter which one, and go into the attribute, which is rotate X, and then press expression, and then I get access to the expression and have the whole control for all of them. So if I wanna change, for example, uh, the amplitude, I could change this to be 30. I could also put this in as being a, um, a variable so the amplitude is controlled by a variable so I don't have to change it um, change all of them but here if I then play you see the pendulum working and then more you play it the more chaotic it's gonna look and then when it starts going uh, back in into the same wave, it will start looking more 
aligned and then go into looking at chaotic again and the, the further it plays it starts um, aligning itself to how it was in the beginning and then the idea is just you just need to make something which looks maybe a little bit more interesting this is one i made specifically for this video where i just played around with the design to make it more visually interesting uh, I just played around with some curves and the sweep function and then I added some colors to the pendulums. If you have any questions just add them to the comments below and if you like this video please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.